بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان گڈ ٹو سی آل آف یو بیک ان دا ماڈیول آف کارپوریٹ گورننس وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ ڈفرنٹ ڈائمینشنز اینڈ ڈفرنٹ ڈلیمرز اینڈ ڈفرنٹ ایشوز ان کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی بین سیئنگ ہاؤ کنفارمٹی اوبیڈینس اینڈ دا بائی اسٹینڈر افیکٹ ٹین ٹو کانولیوٹ دا ریالٹیز دا ٹروتھ اینڈ دا پرنسپلز رولز اینڈ ریگولیشنز آف این آرگنائزیشن اینڈ تھرو دیٹ پرویژن they tend to uh, have an effect on different people and they tend to react in a different way and do not respond towards uh, what the rules and regulations are stipulating and thereby they compromise on the integrity of the organization and become uh, a element uh, of uh, conformity or of obedience or of bystander effect whereby the people who are indulging in misappropriation or wrong practices tend to get away with and that is something which is unacceptable now if we look at a case study which tends to exemplify all of those three different effects then a very famous case which was brought up in the supreme court of pakistan and nearly everyone knows about it are the 56 public companies case of pakistan so today let's look at those 56 companies what were they about what were the different issues why did certain abhorrent corrupt and negative practices survive in those organizations and then most importantly what happened and then now we don't even hear about them anymore these are some very important questions and they put a very big question on corporate governance because these were all companies which are registered with the securities exchange commission of pakistan even though they are public companies but they come under the stipulations of the secp and why weren't proper measures why weren't proper impediments why weren't proper steps taken so that billions and billions of rupees were not wasted of the public exchequer and people did not squander the money so when we uh, look at all of this then these 56 companies come to our mind which which basically were looking at different dimensions of of public works were involved uh, in different uh, in different areas but unfortunately what we see is is that these 56 companies squandered billions of rupees in salaries perks benefits luxurious offices luxury vehicles ghost contracts and nepotism all of these things go against corporate governance now what we see is is that unnecessary expenses were incurred favoritism nepotism discrimination bias and rules and regulations being flaunted frameworks being manipulated and exploited contracts being given to those people who were known to the ceos and to the chief officers and then extremely high salaries and perks for no reason at all for running companies who were not performing and then spending and squandering billions of rupees for no purpose at all and why is it that the other employees of this organization did not raise a voice why is it that they did not try to stop all of it happening why is it that they did not go to the appropriate authorities and inform them well in time well conformity conformity to corruption secondly obedience the top man is saying it he or she is responsible we have to toe the dotted line and thirdly well i'm not corrupt and therefore i'm just i'm just watching i'm just a bystander i don't want to make any noise i don't want to get into bad relations i don't want to put my job into jeopardy and therefore i will stay quiet So what we see ladies and gentlemen was the very negation of 
corporate governance by these 56 companies. And later on, unfortunately, through documentary window dressing, through networking, through cross benefits, and through the manipulation of documentation, most of the companies got away with it. And the question is, ladies and gentlemen, why? Such a big public disaster. But now we don't hear anything about them. We just know that they've been put under the carpet. And the culprits, the criminals, cancer is, uh, corruption is like a cancer which eats into the fabric of a nation. Those cancerous elements, those termites, have basically just eaten into it. And the majority of them have gotten scot free, which again is the negation of corporate governance, is the sacrilege of good governance, is abhorrent, is abusive, is exploitative, is manipulative. And it is necessary that those people should be taken to task. And in future, such disasters should not be allowed. We cannot afford such disasters, either monetarily, socially, or based upon the most important resource of time. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we see that these companies within their own frameworks did so much of abuse. And one of the examples was the CEO in the case of Safpani company. Why would a clean drinking water company need a fleet of bulletproof land cruisers, fully loaded land cruisers? Why? Why did that company need dozens of luxurious vehicles? the most expensive laptops, the most expensive mobile phones, all, all on company expense. Why? What was the output? What was the result? And then we see the misuse of money by the Director General of Lahore Development Authority and the Ashani Housing Authority. Why did that happen? Why was that allowed to happen? Where was everyone? Where were the checks and balances? Where were the audits? Where were the accountants? all succumbing and becoming prey to obedience, bystander effect and conformity, that's very sad and tragic. And that is why one should not be voiceless. And blowing the whistle is mandatory, not optional. In the Pakistani context, there exists a strong cultural element of religious faith. The glorious Quran offers enlightenment to the receptive mind and advocates a code of behavior that is based on doing what promotes the collective good of society. So, this whole paradox that we were talking about, and on the other hand, we have such strong religious affiliations, but our actions don't speak. We, we, we speak about a code of behavior. We tend to speak about promoting collective good. We talk about strong cultural elements. We talk about religious faith. We talk about Asnit Akweem. We talk about goodness. We talk about truth, honesty, belief. We talk about not doing this, not doing that. But unfortunately, we don't practice. So there is a great disparity between what we say and what we do. And it is very important that we overcome this, this hypocrisy, this duplicity, this multiplicity. It is debilitating the whole society. And in light of the previous slide, the short booklet called Reflections briefly extricates points from each part of the Quran. So, yeah, there, there, there are so many books that we can refer to, we can get inspired from, and we can try to read, to understand, to contemplate, to assimilate, to comprehend. 
and then to act. We've made simple things complex, complicated and convoluted. Let's make them simple so they are easier to practice. They would benefit the individual, the community, the society, the institution, the whole world. Let's become more responsible human being. And let's discourage others from damaging, devastating and debilitating our organizations and our communities. Hakukulabab. Extremely important. And we should start walking our talk. Not do the talk shop. Thank you so much, everyone.